Welcome back, All Sports West New York. Bob Tuschinski with Steve Manson, the hockey man, publisher of West New York Hockey Magazine, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. But first, before we go any further, we've talked about this before. I think it's it's going to be it's a done deal. Ted Nolan's going to get let go at the end of the season. Yes. Well. I hate to say this, but you and I are probably the first people that talked about it. We talked about it over a year ago right here in this very show uh, when they were signing him to a three-year deal. I said, hey, there's a year there with a two-year parachute is what a golden parachute. Uh, you know, if things don't go well, and obviously they haven't, uh, somebody's going to get thrown under the bus, and I think it's going to be Teddy. And to, to defend Tim Murray a little bit, Tim never hired Ted. He was hired by Pat LaFontaine, who, of course, obviously is no longer with the organization. But the fact is that, uh, you know, Timmy's got his own guys out there, and, I, you know, who knows what goes on behind closed doors, whether they, you know, are, are on the same page or whatever. I feel technically, well, even more than technically, I feel very passionately that, that Ted deserves another year. He deserves a year with, uh, with a decent hockey club. I mean, there's no question the, the Sabres put together a team this year that was going to not do well, and I'm being very kind in that particular uh, statement. So, I mean, really... Did Ted ever really have a chance? I, th I think he deserves another year, but all, the indicators, the arrows are all pointing that he's not going to get it. My people tell me that, you know, they're not having lunch together every day. It's probably not a great relationship right now between the two. Well, I'm, as we said last year, that uh, Ted had to know when he signed that deal yeah. what it was all about. Well, you know, he look at he, He's a big boy. He's making he, decent money, and I'm yep. sure that, you know, if he walks away with two more years in his pocket, there was a coach with Buffalo Bills that did something similar. But yeah, he, he but, chose that. you know, he in, in this particular case, he deserves a, a, at least yeah, another shot. Okay. All right, let's put up the cover for the new uh, issue mm -hmm. of West New York Hockey Magazine. Right. Uh, this is the uh, March, March issue. issue. And yes. on the cover, uh, guess what? There's, uh, well, there's a great article about the trade between Winnipeg and <laughs> Yeah, at the top, at the top there. But you see, it's a, yeah. uh, a, a, a photo. It's a accumulation yep. of photos from uh, the Empire Sports Network. In March, March 7th, actually, uh, it has been 10 years since the network uh, went away. And I bring this up because uh, it very much has to do with hockey because yep. Empire was the flagship TV station and WNSA was the radio uh, partner. Yep of the Buffalo Sabres, and the Sabres enjoyed quite a bit of coverage during those years. Oh, hey, I, I was so proud to be, you know, a small part of it, being the hockey man on the fan TV show and then later on on the radio and everything. Uh, it was just a fantastic time, a great network, some fantastic, I hate to use that word again, people worked there. I mean, it was just, just a great crowd. I know you were the boss, and you treated me well, very well, but the, the, all the, the crew and the... And the, and the uh, other anchors and stuff like that, just great people. I was general manager for half of the 15 years. I mean, before me yep. was Ron Bertovich, and before Ron was, was mm -hmm. Rich Bradley. But, you know, John Regas, um, who's still unfortunately Yeah, but you were pretty much there from the beginning. I mean, I was there from the beginning, yeah. right. But, you know, he created the show Hockey Hotline with mm -hmm. Mike Robitaille, and then Mike eventually joined, uh, Brian Blessing joined right. Mike, and then after Brian, it was Josh Mora. Um, Hockey Hotline, in, in my opinion, was one of the most, if not the most, successful post-game hockey show in the NHL. I know that uh, yeah. a Batman, they thought very highly of that show up in Toronto. Mm -hmm. They didn't like the fact they got bashed on a regular basis. Right. But that show maintained half of the audience from the game, which is outstanding, really. It's very good you, for post-game shows. I know our younger viewers won't know this, but they no. used to have uh, uh, cassette recorders. I used to always be at the hockey game, but I used to always have my cassette recorder at home taping the show on the old VHS tape or whatever, VCRs they were. VCR, yeah. Got home. I had to see that show because Mike and whoever was co-host with him, Brian or, or Josh or whatever, told it like it was. And I think it was very much because uh, it was a nationally watched show. I mean, they got calls from all over the country. And it really was a solid, solid uh, yeah, so you'll never see that you'll show never see again, that again because uh, John Regas, before and even when he owned the team, he didn't care if right. Mike was critical of the right. team. The team didn't like it. A lot of the players didn't like I it. I know that. Yes. Um, but but John didn't care. Right. So anyway, there's a great article in there about uh, Empire Sports ten years ago. Uh, okay, so the Sabers are going to um, you know they're going to get one of the top two picks. Yep. You think next year? You think next year they're already going to be in line to give a shot at getting the playoffs? That's a tough question. I think they're going to be a much, again, we don't know which one of the picks they're going to get. Um, 
We don't know. We don't even know what's going to trades going to happen between now and next Monday. What trades are going to happen on draft day? Uh, they're going to have a lot. Of, there's a, a little. The Canadian dollar has dropped considerably. The salary cap, which everybody thought was going to go up three or four million dollars, may not go up at all. It may actually come down. There's like 18, 19 teams in the National Hockey League that are right at the cap, meaning they're going to have to dump some players. Well, Buffalo is positioned very, very well because they're well under the cap. Who knows who they're going to pick up this summer? I, it's a, that's a tough question. They're going to be better. There's no question. Yeah. But I thought they were going to be better this year, too. But that's a big jump to go from last in the league yeah, to I, I'm not. Eight. I told you, I think last spring, it's three years away from being a contender. Well, this is one. So there's two more. <laughs> uh, real quick, how did this team win like 11 out of 14 games there in that stretch in December? I mean, was that just an aberration? Well, it was a combination of a number of things. First of all, the goaltending was excellent. Second of all, if there's one sport where you really get on a roll, it's hockey. And they got on a roll. They started believing in themselves. I was very disappointed at the time that maybe the Sabres didn't make a move or two to try to improve that club. But they didn't. And uh, then injuries hit. Then remember how, uh, how many guys were out with the flu for yeah. a couple of weeks and it just, the whole thing kind of fell apart and it, they went from being on that high and on that roll to falling apart and now everybody's down in the dumps and one goal. Oh my God, what's happening? The roof's falling in again kind of attitude. I don't know. I, what is it about hockey, Steve, that illnesses are, are uh, passed along, around to player to player, team to team, much more than you, ever, you see in the NBA? Uh, yeah. I wish I knew. I, I wish they knew. You know, all the guys get the flu shots at the beginning of the year, and I'm sure, I mean, they have medical attention all the time. Maybe it's just because it's such a physical game. Maybe it's because, the and again, I guess basketball is the same way, but the majority of the cities they travel to are cold weather cities, and uh, um, you know, there's a lot of playing a game, taking a shower, getting on a plane, flying that night, getting in some cold city. You know, um, you, you hardly ever see a, uh, uh, a hockey player going in and out of the rink without a toque on his head. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough sport, and they play a lot of games in a short period yeah. of time. Okay, Steve, always great having you on the show. We'll see you next month. Okay, don't my forget friend. the, uh, and Art, Ron, Art Wander says, Bob, you don't emphasize enough that the Western New York Hockey Magazine is a free publication. It's a free publication. So look for it at your local uh, it'll newsstands be all, it'll, or whatever. It'll be all over all the rinks in town. Yeah. And, um, and, this is and, a big, and, uh, and you can go to our website, WNY March is a big Hockey. month. A lot of tryouts being held in March yes. for local leagues. Yep. Steve Manson. Hey, we'll be back to wrap up All Sports Western New York. Don't go away. A beautiful thing coming up next.